Friends, welcome to worship for Sunday, January 31st, 2021, the fourth Sunday of Epiphany, the season where we celebrate Jesus' baptism and the beginning of his public life and ministry. As we look forward to Lent, Holy Week, and Easter, I want to let you know what plans are. Lent begins with Ash Wednesday on February 17th. There will be one service that evening at 7 p.m. at Black Creek, but there will also be a special edition of these outreach materials, print, video, and audio for Ash Wednesday as well. Plans are coming together for our Lent home devotional kits, which will provide you and your household opportunities to connect with your faith, your community, and Christians around the world. Those will be available by Sunday, February 14th. Your parish leadership at all three churches and I continue to work on what Holy Week and Easter will be like and how to keep everyone healthy and safe while still joyously celebrating the good news of the resurrection. Thank you to everyone who stayed after worship last week at Black Creek for our annual meeting. The 2021 budget was passed and we discussed two important things that will need our attention in the coming year a potential replacement of the boiler in the addition, which is already 20 years old, and my sabbatical, a time of rest, reflection, renewal, and education that will likely happen between March 2023 and February 2024. There will be a lot more information about those things in the coming months. Today is the Cecil Annual Meeting, and Sunday, February 7th, is the Trinity Annual Meeting. And now... Trusting in God, we open ourselves to the goodness of God, and we worship together. God of grace and love, we come today to know you more completely. We are amazed every day by what you do for us and for the world. We pray that this time might open us to your spirit moving in our lives. Turn our fear to courage and our confusion to clarity. Be with us gathered or scattered that we might do your work in the world, in our words and our actions. Guide us that we might be faithful to the path Jesus showed us. In his name we pray, amen. Our first hymn today is Praise to the Living God, a celebration that our God is not some remote, far off deity who doesn't care for us, but is here with us, alive in this moment, a part of every aspect of our lives. Thank mm -hmm. you. to confession, knowing that we have not lived as fully as we could have as Jesus' disciples. We come in trust, knowing that the grace of God is freely given to us, offering us another chance to walk more closely in Jesus' footsteps. Let us pray together. God of mercy, we come to you and admit our fears. You come to show us love, and we are afraid of being love in the world. You came to teach us abundance and yet we are afraid of sharing with others. You came to teach us community and peace, 
and we are sometimes afraid of what it might cost us. Forgive us these and all our fears. Set us free and grant us new life. With faith and hope we pray. Amen. Hear the good news in God's grace and Jesus' love we are forgiven and set free. Go now and live as Jesus taught, sharing love and compassion in all you do. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, we come today with joyful hearts for all the blessings of our lives. We thank you for love, for friends and family, for community and for our congregations. Help us as we live through these days. Guide us that we might be patient and compassionate and remember what is truly important in our lives and in the life of the world. Fill our hearts that we might remember how much we depend on you and one another. Be with and keep safe the soldiers, sailors, firefighters, police officers, first responders, emergency medical technicians, utility workers, garbage collectors, and transit drivers. Remind us of the work that farmers, farm workers, factory employees, truck drivers, store clerks, postal workers, and delivery workers do for us and for the world. Keep in your loving care our medical professionals and facilities as they test, treat, and care for the sick, particularly all those dealing with COVID. Be with all who care for others in hospitals, clinics, nursing and care facilities, and child care programs. Give them strength and courage and all the supplies they need to safely do their work. Be with those who lead and make decisions about our collective health carrying out public policy. As we near the year mark of living with COVID, renew our hope, strengthen our faith, deepen our patience and inspire our hearts. Be with all who are living with the effects of the virus in their bodies, their minds, and their souls. Surround our teachers, school staff, administrators, parents, and students with your love as they continue to find ways to balance all that our children and families need. Help us in the midst of the chaos to be joyful. Help us remember to appreciate the beauty of your creation, the ways our communities and congregations support each other, and the incredible faith and flexibility of the people in our parish. Help us, O oh God, to be in solidarity with those who struggle in body, mind, or spirit. We pray for those who are dealing with the challenges of cancer and its treatments. We pray for those who have had or still have COVID, those who are dealing with its long-term effects, and those who have lost loved ones to the virus. We pray for the health of our communities and every community around the world. Heal our bodies if that is possible, but surely, O oh God, help all our spirits be whole and one with you. Be with all, O oh God, who struggle with other problems, including those who have broken and hurting relationships, those who are dealing with the joys and challenges of being in community, and those who have the struggles of addiction, anxiety, and their mental health, particularly in these days when treatment, support, and help are more difficult to obtain. Comfort all those who mourn, O oh God, and be with all who are struggling with grief and loss. Bring comfort to all who grieve. Remind us of your presence and your promise through Jesus of life everlasting. Be with the family of Caitlin Kelly as they continue to wait for news of her whereabouts. Be with all who are struggling in the midst of natural disasters, fires, floods, earthquakes, and more, and bring your peace to all creation. Be with all who are victims of sexism, racism, and all the isms that create hatred and discrimination. Be with all of us as we find a way to move forward together, to do our part in working to challenge and end those sins that cause us to be divided. Be with our country and our communities as we live together and find ways to be who you truly call us to be. Guide us, O oh God, and give us strength 
that we might open our hearts and minds and spirits to your presence and your grace. Help us that we might know the true peace that can never be taken from us. These and all our prayers we entrust to God who knows us better than we know ourselves, for God created us, loves us, and claims us as God's very own. We pray all things with the words that Jesus taught his first disciples, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture reading today is Psalm 111, a celebration of all that God has done in the world and for the faithful. The psalm sings God's praises and God's commitment to the covenant relationship with the people. Our reading is adapted from the New Revised Standard Version. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright of the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord studied by all who delight in them. Full of honor and majesty is God's work and God's righteousness endures forever. God has gained renown by their wonderful deeds. The Lord is gracious and merciful. God provides food for those who worship God and is ever mindful of the covenant. God has shown the people the power of their words in giving them the heritage of the nations. The works of God's hands are faithful and just. All God's precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever to be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. God sent redemption to the people, has commanded the covenant forever. Holy and awesome is God's name. The awe of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. God's praise endures forever. May God add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and living of this scripture. There is one tremendous problem for people like us who want to read and understand the Holy Scriptures. That problem, of course, is that not one line of them, either in the New or the Old Testaments, was written in English. Most of us will probably never study the ancient Hebrew and Greek that they were originally written in, and even fewer of us are likely to take a course of study in church Latin, the primary language the scriptures were in for centuries. This was in fact an important concern for Protestant reformers like John Wycliffe and Martin Luther. They believed that the scriptures should be available to people in what's called the vernacular, their everyday language. The scriptures shouldn't be, the reformers said, accessible only to the few, the priests and the monks, who were privileged enough to learn other languages. They should be for everyone in the same language they spoke at home and at work and at the market. So translations begin. And now in just about any language you can think of, you can find a copy of the Bible. Of course, some translations are better than others. Depending on the source material, which scraps of the ancient scrolls were gathered together and how accurate someone was at translating and copying the scriptures by hand, you get good translations and less good. There's also the trouble when you translate with what the intention is of the person or group who is doing the translation. Everyone, absolutely everyone, has their own bias, their own opinion and ideas about what the scriptures should say to the work of translating, and that naturally affects the translation. So you're thinking to yourself, Pastor, why are you telling me all of this? What possible relevance could it have to my life today in 2021? Today, we heard a wonderful psalm, Psalm 111, that celebrates and rejoices in all that God has done for creation throughout history. 
It talks about the works of God creating a planet that feeds us and sustains us and establishing and upholding the covenant relationship with us, the promise of being with us, caring for us, nurturing and guiding us throughout all time, through all the joys and struggles of our lives. And then at the end, there's a part where the original languages of the scripture matter. The psalmist writes, the something of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The something of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. What we put there, how we fill in that blank, makes a lot of difference in how we understand God and our relationship with God and with others and with the world. The word in Hebrew is yirat. Well, kind of. That's my attempt at transliterating it, speaking the Hebrew word into English. And it's tricky because not only in Hebrew does it read from right to left, but Hebrew doesn't have vowels the way we understand them in English. They're sort of implied or inferred based on concept, context. Now, I didn't do this transliteration on my own, but I sought out someone, some help from a dear friend whose name is Ben, who is Jewish, who has been reading Hebrew for as long as he can remember. And he said, I'm at least close in my pronunciation, so we'll go with that. Then I asked him what Yirath means. And that's when he said I should make a cup of tea because it was going to be a long conversation. The traditional translation into English, the one you probably expected to hear today, is fear. So that the verse would read, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And indeed, that's often what the context for the Hebrew word is in the scriptures. But it could also be understood as wonder or awe. So that the verse reads, as we heard today, the awe of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. But why does it matter? Why does it matter if we say the fear of the Lord or the awe of the Lord? Well, what we think about God and our relationship with God affects how we live in this world, how we think about ourselves, how we treat other people, the choices we make about just about everything we do in this life. If we think we need to be afraid of God, of God's wrath and anger, if the idea of God fills us with fear and trembling, then we're going to live as fearful people. We'll be afraid of stepping out of line, of doing something that God will smite or damn us for. We'll live afraid of making mistakes and we'll treat the world the same way. We'll be afraid of other people, of strangers and those who aren't like us. We will meet people with the same fear we meet God with, afraid that they'll harm us or hurt us, or they'll do something that will cause us to get in trouble with God. If we start with fear, with fear of the one who created us, then we're going to be afraid of the entire world, of everything we say and do, and all the people who share this planet with us. But what if we start with awe? with a sense of wonder and amazement at who God is and what God has done and is still doing in our lives. What if, instead of fear, we have reverence, an idea of perspective that God is so much more than we can imagine, so much more than our words will ever really be able to describe. And that isn't something to be afraid of, but something to embrace, to welcome, and to celebrate. I'd like you to think for a minute of the most beautiful images in nature you have ever seen. It could be a fabulous sunrise or sunset, or the way the leaves look in the fall when they're at their fullest color, or a field of wildflowers on a warm summer's day. For me, it's standing at sunset at the mouth of the Russian River in California where it flows out into the Pacific Ocean, while baby seals are being born on the shore. There, in that moment, I knew beyond a doubt I was standing in the presence of God. I wasn't afraid. I was at peace knowing that I was with the God who loved me and the whole world into life. 
I was amazed by all the things that God does, that these animals should know to come to this place to safely bring their young into the world that the sky should be that particular color of pink and purple, that the sound of the waves meeting the river should be so much like a symphony, and that I, one of billions of humans, should be there to witness it all. I stood there in the presence of the Creator, the one celebrated in our psalm today without a trace of fear, but with the deepest awe and wonder and amazement at all that God does for me, for those seals and for the world. What if that was how we looked at the world and our place in it, with a sense of awe and amazement instead of fear? What if we woke up every morning and thought, I wonder what incredible things God has in store for me and for creation today? Or I wonder how God will remind me that I am loved and I need to love others today? What if? Instead of fearing God's smiting and disapproval, we marvel at how God has been with us and with all creation, fulfilling the promises of the covenant each and every minute of our lives. Now I know, I am a card-carrying optimist who has trained myself to look for the good and the hopeful, but I really do believe in the depths of my soul that if we looked at the world, the world God created in love, the world God declared good and blessed, the world that God sent Jesus to live in, not to condemn, but to love it into something better. That if we looked at the world that way, it would change everything about how we live and it would truly change the world. It's not easy particularly if you watch the news some days or if you're in the midst of your own struggles with all the challenges that life brings. But that's why we do it together, why we live a life of awe and wonder as God's people together so we can support and encourage each other when the going gets tough, so we can remind each other of God's goodness, of our goodness, of the goodness and love that fills every part of creation. We train ourselves on a daily basis to see the hope, the love, the peace, the beauty, the courage, the goodness of humanity. And we forget when we get down on ourselves and the world and think there's only despair, and then we remind each other of it, of the promise of God's covenant love that is with us forever through all that life brings. Then, my friends, then the words of the psalmist will come true, and the awe of the Lord, will truly be the beginning of our greatest wisdom, a wisdom that lets love fill us and all creation and truly builds the kingdom of God's promise. Amen. Let us pray. God of compassion and kindness, we thank you for gathering us together from all the different places of our lives as one people. Remind us of your grace poured out for us and for the world. Strengthen and inspire us as we grow into your community of beloved children. Help us to live as Jesus did, reaching out to those who are dismissed by the world, comforting those who are struggling, rejoicing with those who are celebrating, weeping with those who are grieving, and loving everyone as we find them, without exception. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen from the great congregational hymn writer Isaac Watts, this hymn, I Sing the Mighty Power of God, is one of my favorites, a celebration of God's presence throughout all creation. I sing the mighty, I sing the mighty power of God that makes the mountains rise, that spreads the flowing seas abroad and builds the lofty skies. I sing the wisdom that ordained the sun to rule the day, 
The moon shines full at His command, and all the stars obey. I sing the goodness of the Lord that fills the earth with food. He formed the creatures with His word, and then pronounced them good. Lord, how thy wonders are displayed, where'er I turn my eye. If I survey the ground I tread, or gaze upon the sky, there's not a plant or flower below, but may Thy glories known, or clouds arise and tempests blow by order from thy throne. While all that borrows life from thee is ever in thy care, and everywhere that man can. friends receive this benediction. May you know the love of our congregations that provides us with community and strength through all our days. May you know the grace of God, the love of Jesus, and the encouragement of the Holy Spirit, and may they bring you hope, peace, love, and joy in these days and always. Amen.